Hello, Internet Strangers. Chris Delion here. Let's make a video game real quick. I kind of need a haircut and I have a meeting real soon, but let's squeeze this in because video games are cool. Uh, document dot create element. We're going to do something a little bit different this time than I have been in that we're going to create the documents canvas and script. God, it's hard to type and talk at the same time. Thank you for those of you out there, by the way, who recognize that that's one of the harder things going on here. I mean, I've been programming games for 20 years, which means by now the coding part is not what slows me down. It is talking. Uh, get context while doing it is still a little bit of a challenge, but we're going to do it. Context will equal that. And from that, we also need to document dot body dot, uh, append child the canvas to it. So we've got our game. Let's do a set interval to get our action going. And people sometimes rightfully point out like, Hey, this isn't the optimal way to do it. Maybe you should use, you know, wait for animation frame and like that eh, fair point, but it's kind of not really the objective that we're all about today. We're just making some action happen. Just trying to show that on a standard computer, home computer in 2017, you don't need to download anything. You don't need to install anything. You don't need to write 10 bajillion lines of code. You don't need to use uh, Unity or Unreal to just make a game, to just get gameplay stood up and playable. As a, And you know, all we're really doing today too is kind of basically a starting point. So we can, uh, ooh, so okay, uh, think for a second. Player X, player Y, player dimension, player dimension. I'll go ahead and define those up top. And boink, you know, it's a starting point. So obviously it's hacky, it's throwaway code. Um, dimension 30, position 100, I don't know. Let's also do the same thing for shots, except for shots, we're gonna have a list of them and they'll have a shot dimension, which is four. Uh, and then the enemies will likewise also be enemy, enemy, dimension 25. Uh, let's think about our speeds while we're up here and thinking about variables. So the player speed, 15. Enemy speed, five. Some of these will be totally off and bad, in which case, whatever, seven. We'll come back and we'll change those. Um, that's part of game development. Separate, right, getting it to work. So lime, ooh, it's good for the var, s equals zero, s less than, ah, uh, not i, um, sl length, s plus plus. So that's how we're gonna loop through our shots. For each one of these on the shot list at s dot x. And some people who see these videos, they will inherently be like, ooh, wait, no, shot dimension, shot dimension. Let's actually also center our graphics. Some people are, by the way, as always, every time I make one of these speed coding demos, they post in the chat like, hey, he's obviously memorized this code, done it 100 times. Uh, he's, you know, you name it, he's got a cheat sheet. He's just pressing control Z a dozen times. That's one of my favorite. Um, no, the you want the secret? The secret is I've been doing this for 20 years, made over 100 games mostly on my own time, which just for fun, for kicks, specialize in small scale, quick stuff, which means I'm a little bit quick at it. Um, and it really is, and I want to emphasize that's not because of any sort of like innate talent or anything else that really is just raw practice time. It's like when you see somebody on America's Got Talent and they're like spinning a table on their legs. Spawn, hold on for a second. So every two seconds, no, 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 <laughs> that is a problem. Every two seconds, we're going to spawn an enemy Enemy list, we're going to push, add as Unity C Sharp. This is JavaScript. Um, and then we're going to the X position to the right side of the screen and Y position to math.randoms built in function from zero to one times canvas.height will be a random right side of the screen. Booyah. Um, oh, you know what else we're missing is an input. Uh, but yeah, it's like America's Got Talent where you have uh, add event listener. That's not America's Got Talent at all. <sighs> we're going to ignore key, <laughs> going to ignore uh, holding keys today, by the way, which means we have some like built in ugly. OS functionality, you hold on the key, it's going to have inconsistent jittering, but we'll make do. Um, but yeah, it's like on those shows where there's like somebody who they've spent their entire adult life and teenage years and whatever, just bouncing a table on their foot or whatever the kind of weird, uh, we're going to space bar here, which by the way is 32 for decimal, OX 20 for my hexadecimal friends. Uh, and every time we're going to append a shot to our list and we're going to spawn that shot from the player, PX, YPY. But it's just raw practice time. And I really, and I want to emphasize that partly because when you see this sort of thing, I want you to know, like, if you put in practice, you can do these sort of things too. Um, PX plus equals, do we have a P speed? We set a P speed, right? Yeah, it's in my head. So uh, this is going to be left and then clockwise, once again, for our arrow key inputs, which we could console log those out. You can look them up. Con key codes have been around forever. The, theoretically, these are actually obsolete in browser. We're not supposed to use these anymore. Nobody I know is actually still supports those things or if we do we do it redundantly so that's a uh, y down here too going down yeah left up right down uh we need these shots to uh move we have our shot speed as well don't we uh maybe we don't shot list shot dimension there it is enemy speed 
speed shot. There it is. Just changed the wrong one. That makes sense. Okay. So we're going to make the shots slide over at that rate. Uh, why type something more than once when you can copy and paste it? Uh, plus equals shot shot in terms of whenever you got long words, typos are one of your enemies. And that's part of why for these demos, unlike when I'm writing an actual program or doing a demonstration for instructional purposes, unlike this video, which is not instructional, it's just a speed hacking demonstration. So that's going to slide to the left. Uh, part of why I keep low length variable names, even though it's ugly, hacky, bad coding. Uh, let's have our shots collide with enemies uh, is because it reduces the chance of typos, which would otherwise surely slow me down. Uh, let's have it go backwards to the list so we can cut things out of it while we do it. Um, and, you know, I will also acknowledge fully that, like, having multiple var e's in here is kind of ugly. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Kind of don't care. Uh, Vx, not least for today. Absolute value. We're going to separate the uh, value at e from this list. It's x position relative to the x position of the shot that we're inspecting. And we'll do the same thing for a delta y or difference y, if you prefer that over the math words. Y, y. And we'll do a little bit of square root action to achieve a total distance calculation, which is actually kind of even, uh, not dist, uh, square root. Kind of even wrong here since we are not using circles, right? We're using rectangles for everything. So that's approximate. But if the distance is less than the sum of their radiuses, which you could also ask by saying shot diameter plus enemy diameter, all divided by two, then in that circumstance, we want to splice the enemy out of the list. Enemy list dot splice at position E, cut out one from the list. Yeah, that seems like that'll do that. Um, we also need to make the enemy be able to bump the player. We'll go down here and check every enemy against the player. And of course, this is not super efficient optimized algorithms for collision testing or whatever. This is raw, straightforward, get it done. Once again, we've ever done it VARs within the same function. Please forgive me. It's hacky demo code. PXPY, same thing there, same thing there. Uh, instead of shot becomes player. And to reset our game, let's just say like shot list equals empty array, enemy list equals empty array. We'll spit the player position, jostle them up back to kind of a start position. And we'll break out of the list since we just broke it. And uh, that might be it. I guess we've got spawning, we've got enemies and stuff. If there's an error, we will fix it. And we will fix it together so you can see that. And it's okay to have errors in code. Like obviously for these demos, I give myself some pressure and stress trying to not get errors because I want to show off some cool stuff and be entertaining. Oh, get him. Oh, I'll crash into this guy. Testing crashing. Oh my God, it's so hard to die at my game. There we go. Boop, there, okay, good. See, I touch an enemy, I die, I get reset. And of course, this is a starting point. But anyway, I do want to emphasize, this is not normal. This is again, a demonstration. When you write code, there will be errors and that's fine. I still, when I'm writing real code and not just doing a quick demonstration where I can juggle a very simple program in my head, all the time, there's going to be little errors and stuff to fix. That's fine. No big deal. Doesn't mean you're anything wrong. It's not like getting a red marked paper handed back to you in school. Uh, it's totally just a part of programming. It's an old saying. I can't remember if it was Newth or who. It was so like, coding is debugging. And let's just demonstrate too that, uh, you know, again, the distance check is close enough for our collisions. But it's a starting point. We get all kinds of other cool features and spread shots. And we give the enemies projectiles and different kinds of enemies. And we get to stick some graphics in there, some sound effects. Get a whole neat game going. But for now, space shooter. As always, too, on these little demos, these are, ooh, that's in Chrome, where I'm going to be logged in by teaching thingy. Uh, let's open this up. Part of what I do with these videos for is to encourage you to check out CodeYourFirstGame.com, a video course that now, happy to say, over 81,000 people have taken by the time of this video. It's completely free. You don't need to install any special software. You don't need to install anything unusual. There's no, there's no like, outside frameworks besides just plain text editor in a standard web browser using built-in functionality. A little bit like what I showed here, except because it's instructional, it's paced much slower. I use var, obviously. I try to show some slightly better typing habits and so on. Uh, but yeah, it assumes no background. So you can start making games today, trying to get as many people as I can in the world across that line from they've only thought about making games to now they're making games. And then year after year, getting better and better and better at writing. Better code, better games, bigger games, more cool stuff. Uh, most of which will not happen in under about 75 lines. But, you know, it's a starting point. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I look forward to playing your games in the future. Bye for now.